Good evening. You are listening live to the Extreme Movie Show. I'm your host, Rob. Alongside me tonight from Central Florida, I have Professor Pixel from the great snowy Midwest. I have RDV, who will be, of course, joining me Tuesday night for our continuing review of Tulsa King. I believe we're on episode five or six, but it's damn good. And I apologize for the slight lateness in our getting started here. I, I'm now uh, sitting here, kind of difficulty with my Dark Shadows boner because we just covered a great new episode. <laughs> so for you guys that want to know what Dark Shadows is about, we just finished season one, episode four, The Revival from 1991. Check that out. And also, programming note, next Sunday being Christmas, we will not be on, but we may have some stuff popping up between now and then, too. And then we'll be back on New Year's Day with our continuing monthly Bond review up for your eyes only. So, guys, tonight we have a great uh, film here, too. Lauren Bacall, I believe it's her first film, too. It's the one that she got the hots <coughs> for, got a little wet for Humphrey, um, who dismissed his third wife. And they had what they called a Hollywood romance that people always like to go upon. And I got to tell you this, with the few Humphrey Bogart films we've covered, Love the guy. He's just got a natural charisma and assertiveness about him. This film had a lot of interesting takes on it. Like it's a, basically it's a remake of Casablanca. Whether that's good or bad, that, I'll, we'll leave that to you guys to decide. But I will say this from my initial thoughts. Very watchable film. I prefer other Humphrey Bogart films to me. Um, I thought his partner in here that was a scumbag did a great job of giving me the heebie-jeebies. Not in a creepy way, but in a filthy, disgusting, He's I can't trust him vibe. Lauren Bacall is always um, enjoyable to me, and it's interesting watching this where we don't normally dive hardcore into the political aspects of films, of how they danced around the topics of what was gone, because obviously Casablanca and uh, World War II with communism versus liberty and everything else was, is, is always a theme, and here it definitely is as well. It's the backdrop for this island Martinique where we see Rick, er, not Rick from Casablanca, Humphrey Bogart here basically playing himself. And uh, he gets involved in some shenanigans, and I think it's pretty good. And I got to say this, the sharpness of the movie was just pretty damn good. And I always forget how well-written some of these things are. But RDV, you and I always talked about some old movies on extreme classics, um, and we've definitely covered several of them. We will continue to do so. What was your initial take on this film? And also, was it a first watch? It was a first watch for me. And it's funny because uh, we were just talking about that offline before we went live. Yeah, this uh, basically is Casablanca too, and I gotta say, I enjoy their interchange between Bogart and Bacall in this more than I did in uh, Casablanca. Really? Yeah. Thus, the uh, little quips uh, be, uh, when they're she goes up, she, bring, she goes to bring him some wine, and then he, you know, asks her about a pass, you know, and stuff, and it is going the whole scene. The kids kept I was like, you could tell these two were just kind of like, you know, just. Just kiss. <laughs> I could tell there was attraction to them, but there, but there were. He was wise about what, well, about his words, how he went about it, because you know he's like, you know, uh, and she was kind of a mystery, but he was, he wasn't gonna take any of that shit, you know. He was pretty much, you know, I'm here for myself, you know, and uh, you're gonna either gonna be straight with me or I'm just gonna like, you know, I'm not interested. And she didn't like that, you know, because. Uh, I look like she says, like, you know, I've been angry since I hear you, ever since I met you. He's like, well, yeah, you and a lot of people. What makes you so special? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, he, he's just got that natural. Yeah. It's not that I don't yeah. give a, a, a fuck attitude, but it's yeah. just uh, I could take it or kind of leave it that we always, as a young guy, picture a man has sure. and how he handles it. And that's that cool factor that he has. Yes. Uh, so the, she was actually 19 in this movie. He was 44. Yep. So they, they, got a, they got married a year later. Yep. 25 year difference crazy yeah and it's always different when there's an age difference and people will say what they say about may december romances and, and those kinds of things here too but it obviously happens it still does to this day and always will so i just remember lauren bacall as a kid uh being talking about and, and then of course in, in cartoons and tunes you would see humphrey bogart and other ones james cagney and everything so you kind of knew who they were because because of that at least on reruns and so growing up late night you, they would always play movies and a lot of more Humphrey Bogart ones so on our three channels and black and white TV you get to see them a lot but damn it it's just when you think of great actors to me it goes all the way back to he's one of the first ones that I really like you know there's Errol Flynn and a few others but definitely um definitely I think the chemistry aspect you, you nailed it absolutely perfect here too and there is some great scenes but our young 20 something guy Professor Pixel here is somewhat new as far as joining us on our extreme classics but even though we did what was it not Rio Bravo but El Dorado the three of us and we decided to do another one I wanted to ask you Pixel what your initial thoughts were on there because we love we of course love anything that every Bogart's in but we don't know if you do uh well you know um 
I think we did our review of Casablanca this past year, right? I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. Uh, Bogart is the man. He is, of course, great uh, because, you know, he does pretty much play himself. But, you know, we like himself. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, And I think in here it's it, it's pretty good. I enjoy, I also like Eddie, who, who's there, uh, the, the uh, drunk that he keeps around on ship. Uh, but when, when we're talking about chemistry, there's something between Bacall and, uh, Bogart that's special. We saw it in, um, Dark Passage that yep. we talked about last mm -hmm. year. Uh, and I think that this just goes ahead and shows it at another angle, uh, because we can actually see his face this time, but yeah. <laughs> If you've got it, just capture it. That's the whole bottom line. You know, so, you know. Earlier tonight, we talked about dark shadows, and the one comment I made on episode four with Barnabas being over the top is: it's a simple scene. You know what's going to happen. You let him do it, and despite how good or bad or over the top the dialogue was, we said it's believable. And in here, the chemistry, we're not really necessarily listening to what they are. We know what's going on just by watching her reactions to the way he's talking and his indifference and it's flirting for lack of a better term and you know the backdrop's interesting uh for those that care because martinique and the islands there you know a lot of times here in florida we've got uh, spanish names but the french had a big influence here and so at the part of world war ii when france um was taken over at the time you had a lot of dissonance run over to martinique where liberty was still a big deal and that's where United States gets their part of liberty from is the the French idea of you know individual liberty and Humphrey Bogart's considered by many to be one that exemplifies that characteristic as a human being whether right wrong or indifferent some even politically like to think of him as a libertarian one of the earlier ones that we see on screen and so they dance around talking about communism versus this or that they simply talk about you know how do you feel where, you know where do your sympathies lie and even when they get in, interrogated a little bit later in the film once something happens they handle it appropriately where they where it's clear that the movie's intention is really about how you deal with the situation not what your beliefs are and that, that would be a good lesson for modern film too but you can kind of dismiss that and watch that but if you're young and watching it and you and you don't know about all that stuff it's going to be lost on you probably but it doesn't matter with how good they're acting with it too so he charters a boat and they see him dealing with a guy that owes him some money and we see how he's proficient and how his buddy is not. Why? Because he likes the bottle a little bit too much. <laughs> and he uh, hiccups when he gets drunk, which is a key yes. point, you know. Uh, also, Walter, stuff. also Walter Brennan. <laughs> yes. Yes. That, that his, is true, too. He, his Eddie, he's, uh, he's just fun, man. He's, just, he's a fun character. He's not annoying. Um, you can see, yeah, he's kind of, he is kind of a little bit of a charity case in, in the sense that, you know, uh, Harry has a sauce side for this guy, even though this guy is hitting the sauce, you know, and, and he gives him up, you know, he'll give him a beer just so you can have, you know, because he get the shakes. He knows the good in him that we haven't seen. Overall, though, like I said, like, you know, when Eddie walks in, like, you know, he's like, oh, I, we not. I may be, I may be drinking all, but I never forget. And at, and at the end, he forgets. Uh, when, least, when, he. But at the start, when he drank all of Johnson's beer, I know, <laughs> you know I had that insured by the bottle, and he's like, "Oh, thank, thank you for that." <laughs> he's like Gilligan almost in a sense. I, I do want to point out, and and that this is a Howard Hawks film, and we had mentioned that one of Howard's traits was that he made women to be kind of strong. Is one of the first directors to kind of do that. Um, and also that he wouldn't have necessarily any scenes that he thought would be bad. It was just like, it's more about the character, less about the plot, give the people who are watching it what they want. And so he has a certain type to it. And that's interesting because with Lauren Bacall being her first role and she's like 18, 19 at the time, um, that's not easy to do. And back then you were groomed for a role and you, you work, got a weekly salary and you got trained on how to do stuff, how to walk, how to talk, how to present yourself. And that's what they mean by old Hollywood. And some people still like that old studio approach where the talent is homegrown on the inside. Um, and maybe you'd be loaned out to other studios. And all that. Obviously it's not that way today, but there's something to be said for saying, Hey, we got to put out the best product that we can. How are we going to do it? So 
I don't know. I, I, I think the movie itself flows pretty well. It's interesting. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Dr. No, because I was like, what's the first movie I saw that had all these fishing scenes, you know, in it, we get some of them there, <laughs> some of it. And it's just, I, I just can't stop the fact that when he sees her pickpocket, the dude that is, you know, the owes of money follows her up. She's Johnson, not. I think his name was yeah. Right. Yeah, so he follows her up to the room because they're all staying in the same hotel and they were down there in the bar. And he kind of basically put pulls her into his room, locks the door, and she's like, well, what are you going to do? And he's like, well, I want the wallet, you know, because she lifted the wallet off the guy. And he discovers, and, and there's a lot of stuff happening here, but it's basically the whole movie. The guy that owes him like 825 American dollars um said well i have to go to the bank and i'll pay you tomorrow so it here it is in the evening the night before all this is supposed to happen and he's got traveler's checks for like 14 1500 bucks yeah, and uh, some cash so we know that the guy's leaving because <laughs> he also has a plane ticket in there for 6 a.m when the banks open at 10 and she and uh humphrey have a conversation about how to handle it and this isn't a short scene it goes on for a little bit but it sets everything up and i thought you know that's one of the things that we talked about with characters is that if you like the characters, you can give them a simple thing, but how does it work out? And that's the human part to it that I find enjoyable yeah. in a lot of movies and care about. So what are you going to say there? Arjun? I was just going to say the line about that. He's like, he's like, you know, he's, well, he's still my client. And he's like, and he's like, wait, he's going to skip out. Well, no, I don't like him either. Like, yeah. you know, I'm going to hold on to this money for, you know, yeah, it's going to hold on to this. Or, or how about when she makes the comment about, well, you know, I guess maybe I shouldn't have done this. And she's, and he's like, well, no, you just, you know, don't steal the money from somebody who owes it to somebody else kind of thing. Cause you yeah, know, the yeah, idea is that you yeah. get yourself in trouble. It's he's not condemning her actions or nope. why he's just seeking understanding and they're converting, you know, having a conversation with each other and about was, uh, how to handle it. That guy Johnson is Walter uh, Sunday. who was actually was in uh, a lot of different movies yep. over the years. So he's like, these, none of these guys are small time actors. These are people that went on to do a lot of things. Yes. Uh, yes. So yeah. And he actually died in 1971, I think. Yeah, Walter's not. Yeah, that's the other thing too. I was looking up. I was like, "There's another guy in here, uh, Dan Seymour. He plays like the main like Gestapo villain kind of like guy because they're because they're in Cuba um, right now during wartime." Well, uh, and, Martinique. They changed it from the book instead of being it, Cuba it, because wait. that was obviously we weren't allowed to say that at the time with the treaties and mm -hmm. stuff going on with the other. Well, yeah, yeah, the, the, the island instead of Cuba. Yeah, but uh, which it, also ties into Dark Shadows, but that's another matter. So I want to point out that this guy Dan Seymour went on to like he lived until 1993. Man, uh, uh, he only I think the only other cast member that survived him or passed him was Lauren Bacall, I think, because how young she was. But this guy, true. this guy Dan Seymour, though, he is a fat aristocrat. He is the one they had big fun of in the Disney movies. He had the big fat cat, Rescue Rangers and stuff. No, what do you think a, about his, his his performance his, though? He's he reminds me of a lot of guys I know. They think their size is kind of intimidate, but they're kind of cowards. You know, and and then so and him coming up as this guy, this guy's he plays the villain. He plays a villain a lot in a lot of Warner Brothers movies, especially the ones with Bogart. He was in Key Largo as well, remember? And Casablanca. Mm -hmm. So when I see this guy, it's just like you know he is good at playing that role. He just makes you want to hate him because <laughs> it's just like he's just so good at it. Uh, and Bogart's always a guy. He's like you know he's playing it cool, but he's really in, he's in overhead in every single movie he's him in. <laughs> it's like, that's what made it cool. And then you had Lauren Bacall was kind of like she like she's always plays the dame, you know. And I love how he says, like, he's like dames in here. He's like, oh <laughs> it's like just the whole the whole cast, the way the interaction, the way everything is written, it's just amazing. Uh it, it's just that's what makes this uh these movies stand out more than any uh, the some of the newer movies, even the ones that even from the sixties. The the way they handled everything, the the, the slang, the the, the culture. Uh, do you notice that a lot of his stuff is well, obviously because it's at the time, but the wartime movies I always find them more appealing. And the ones that ones that don't take the ones that take place during the war, but not in the war, you know? Right. And they that, show the effects of what the war yes. has done to somebody in their situation, and that's a way that they can make their observation about what war does to somebody well don't don't show me the war thing and somebody getting shot show me the effect that it has on yeah, here's yeah. a guy that's like an outcast having to rely on himself the whole liberty thing and here he is on martinique and he can't even you know be there in on his own trying to you know make a, a life's living when when he has these two opposing forces that you know get him wrapped up and and force his hand as it were yeah and i kept thinking like you know he's like he's like 
talk of the guy before they left, you know, him and Johnson before the, the very beginning of the movie, they're gonna go uh and uh go fishing. You know, he's like, Well, it's it's gonna take him like you know, like, hey, 15, like, I need at least 10 bucks. He's well, here's 15. I'm thinking, like, and right there, you could tell that Johnson was uh getting ready to skip <laughs> or something because yep. or he's just a the guy has just way too much money on his hand. But uh, overall, I love the little yeah, I love the boat. I love the whole thing with the fish scene, you know, the swordfish. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's a guy. He's like, if you had a god, he wouldn't be jumping over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's just one of those things where that—that's a human thing. Where, like, say, 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 your air conditioner blows out, and somebody comes to your home, and they want to tell you about this and that or whatever, like, and you just want to sit there and say, "What's the problem? How much is it going to cost me?" And basically, well, I disagree, and people will lose their shit. Well, I've been doing this 20, 30 years, and you're like. I don't care how long you've been doing it, you know, and it's a lot of that is lost in movies today here that you're dealing with very fast, quick witted thinking people and Humphrey Bogart's not suffering any, any fools here. Even Lauren who kind of uses her wares a little bit on the realizes, man, I can't manipulate this guy sexually, even though I'm attracted to him. He's, he's a man, man, a man's man. And how does he handle the situation? Well, it turns out that there's a shootout. And so is the part of the guy that owes him all the money that he had to, he made her or convinced her to return the wallet and then kind of call the guy out in front of everybody right at that moment when it's going to get resolved is the, is the shootout that leaves him dead. And then of course he takes the money and then they try to figure out what they're doing when, when the, uh, the local big bad guy that wants to know where your sympathies lies coming and in, in, interrogating you. And we see she's plays it like a young person would be. She's a little hot headed about it. Doesn't like it. she even gets slapped a little bit, which is whatever. But then he kind of has like a, like a, like a pro. He's like, yeah, you know, you owed me money, so I took the cash. And he, the guy's like, well, give it to me. So he gives him the money. It's like, no, all of your cash. And you know, there's the line in there about, well, it's being impounded by the government that, of course, you know, is around the world. So if your claim turns out to be valid, you'll get it back. And I think that's an obviously political statement on communism or just you know the man as it were if you want to talk about it and you could just see the look in his eyes like i'd better step and not say anything so i get myself out of here but mm-hmm. it forces his hand because he had been approached by people that he knows and trusts hey i've got some people if you could transport them it's worth this amount of money it's kind of like for a cause and this is where we get into the casablanca it's, it's one of many reasons why people think it's a casablanca ripoff um, so, and so it feels like he has to do it basically and ends up doing it, which is the third act of it for the most part and how he handles it. So yeah, the comparisons are yeah. definitely there, but it, it moves along briskly. I, I, I enjoy it too. It's really fast. I got a question from, uh, for pixel. What do you think yes. of Dolores Mor- uh, Moran? Uh, and did you, were you also like me hoping for a cat fight? I, I wasn't thinking about a cat fight, honestly. Um, well, I, I, that's what I'm calling it, but that's not what I'm thinking. Was <laughs> no, um, I mean, she isn't. She isn't Lauren McCall. She's good, but she's no Lauren McCall. Uh, but she, no, in this movie, she's fine. Wow, I give you a, give you that photo, and all of a sudden you're just sassy now. Well, oh, that would right. be Lauren McCall. Yeah, <laughs> but call me. Uh, <laughs> now so what do we think of the ending of the movie how it played out the ending was pretty good um uh obviously uh no one was killed on this set the prop gun but <laughs> uh oh boy the ending sounds is- like you have some thoughts <laughs> i i want to i want to hear rob what are your <laughs> thoughts burning with uh this movie ending huh? there are no thoughts in this movie not that kind of thought. I'll, I'll chime in <laughs> after RDB's comment. <laughs> I I hope he hasn't forgotten and isn't a little bit rusty. Uh oh, oh. Overall, I said the ending of this was actually pretty good. Um, I like this better than you know than uh, here's looking at you, kid, and then she goes off with her husband or boyfriend of her, and this this he gets the girl at the end, and that's what makes it better for me than Casablanca. Uh, instead of him just staying behind, you know, and uh, but uh, overall, uh, Dan Seymour uh, basically gets you know gets gets taught a, a lesson of humility, you know, yeah, uh, pistol whip some, and, he's, and I love how he's because he basically uh, they they're gonna they want to know what's going on, they're gonna torture Eddie, and so they have him in there, and he's him and Lauren McCall, they're, they're inside the little uh, his little room there, 
And uh, he's like, do you mind if I get a smoke? And it's like, you know, he's like, hey, it's in the pack of the drawer. So, so Lauren opens up the the, uh, the drawer, sees the gun there, gives him the pack of cigarettes. You know, and he goes back. He's like, oh, crap, I don't have a light. So he reaches him into the, the drawer, grabs the gun, and quickly shoots the guy in the front. So now there's like two left. Uh, there's Dan Seymour and his other goon. And he basically has the other guy uh, go in their pockets, get their guns, and handcuff them. And then he's, I love how he says, he's like, so uh, I, I need one of you, one of you two needs to make a phone call. It's like, you know, I don't care who it is, you know, but I'm going to beat the heck, I'm going to beat you, one of you, or both of you, and only one of you guys is going to get a senseless beating. So obviously the guy who uh, caves you know, is uh, Dan Seymour, after, you know, because he does yeah, he's all about himself. He doesn't care about the other guy. So they might as well it. be wearing a bow tie because you can't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, bow ties aren't cool, and that's why I got hit. Uh, but overall, uh, the ending was good. Uh, they never actually, and this is cool too. Um, we got to see Lauren Bacall at least sing in this movie. Uh, and the, I that's the one thing I, I was expecting. But um, towards the end, yeah, she basically she goes says a little goodbye to uh, the cricket, who's the piano player, and I. I I'm trying to remember who Cricket is. Oh, Carmichael. Yeah, I, I, I said nobody in here is just a, a, a one-off person. Everyone in here is is a, someone who's actually an entertainer. Because back then, you uh, did everything. You sang, you danced, you know, mm-hmm. you played the panel. Everybody Triple was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so she says, "Guy, he's like, was, and he asks her he's like, before he leaves, like, are you happy?' She's like, yes. He plays a little tune. She and she does her little, her little dance." And I was just like, man, he's getting lucky tonight, and I'm pissed off because she's hot. Because <laughs> uh, Lauren Bacall, like I said, Lauren Bacall, her attitude in this, though, all the way through the movie, and her interaction with Bogart is what sold the movie for me. The yeah. plot was kind of a little weak, but this their their chemistry, and of course, this led to the, the, them having an affair. Uh, it was a big scandal, but then they got married, you know, until his death. You know, they were. Well, I think Howard Hawks is boning the blonde, too, at the end of it anyway. So, I mean, yeah. these things happen. And <laughs> it is relevant to the film. It is in the sense that um, it was Bacall's you know, first movie, so it was a big deal to make sure she doesn't flop, not necessarily be a success. But the point is, is, is the path that an actor and actress takes later on is influenced by a lot of decisions that have nothing to do necessarily with the quality of the film that they're in, how much money it makes. There are other things, too, that we usually have a tendency not to get in too much on it. You know, if we want, you know, camp and goth, we talk dark shadows, and that's what we do. So we kind of let it out there a little bit. But I agree with you. I think for my final thoughts, I, I concur totally. If you're a fan of either of them, then this is a movie that you're going to eventually see at some point. I do think other movies they have or have done are better or more fun or more likable to me. This one, if you've seen Casablanca, then you see this one. I can see where it gets the... Yeah, but it's like Casablanca, so I don't know. I, I get it. Um, I don't think it does enough to really differentiate itself from it. But, it, I mean, obviously, it's it's a different film, but it does got a lot of the same elements. That's just with how massive Casablanca was, how much people loved it. For people to sit there and, and see that, I, I, I can understand it. I, I, I can get it. I wouldn't call it hate, but people might say it's mid compared to Casablanca, and I would understand that too. But So uh, here's something that's really cool. Um, the guy who basically... Uh... Um, uh, Hawks, you know, his uh, him and his wife that, that they basically their nicknames were Slim and Steve. Yep, so they put it into this, yep. and I didn't, re- I didn't realize that that Bizarre magazine was going was that old. Yeah, yeah, that's what they discovered her. Um, his wife discovered her at, on uh, the Bizarre magazine, a cover that she was a model. And that's how it's how Bacall got uh, you know, signed on to this movie. Yeah, and we'll be talking more about her too. Um, obviously, the years go by here on the Extreme Movie Show too. She's um, she's very watchable, I think too. Pixel, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, I am the person that you're that you were just saying. I found this movie very good. I love them a lot. They're great. Casablanca is better than this. Casablanca is one of the greatest love stories ever told. Uh, it's not and a love story. the tragedy, <laughs> the tragedy behind it, is uh, just another part, another layer. Um, but that that's part of that. But here, I I can like I like a happy ending too. Uh, you, you know that you got to take uh, you got to have some good sometimes. It's yeah, not the beginning and- of a beautiful friendship, but it's the beginning of a beautiful relationship, I suppose. 
Right. And, and uh, not to turn this into a full blown different discussion, but since uh, the program, you know, at the beginning was that, you know, we have the dark shadows that we just did live with Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be going live RDB and I to do Tulsa King with the next episode um, after it drops. And then next week being Sunday is Christmas. So I'd like to thank everybody. Happy holiday. Merry Christmas or not or whatever it is you do or don't do over this time break. So our schedule will be a little bit off, but the week after that we'll be back on it. We may drop some other things too. Um, so quickly, guys, just because I know everybody's on Twitter, Bill, and on my line want to argue certain things. And Pixel will understand the answer to this in RDB. You may not care, but I'll give you guys a brief moment to spout off. What's the best Christmas movie of all time quickly? RDV? you go first in other holiday. words is die hard a christmas movie that's the real question i'll, I'll just say holiday fair okay um professor pixel is, is die hard a holiday movie i mean a christmas movie is it is it a question of what's the best christmas movie of all time or is die hard a christmas movie give me both quickly uh i will say that die hard is a <sighs> I, it's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> it's no. set in Christmas, but it's not a Christmas movie. Sorry. How dare you? You're an Elvis. But you're you're gone. Uh, Rob isn't going to like my uh, my answer here. I have come around a, a long way, but I think that perhaps the best... No, 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 no. I, I had to rethink that. Miracle on 34th Street is the best Christmas movie. So. It has the spirit of Christmas... It has the, the giving nature of Santa. You got it all. It's all there. Well, I can't argue the fact that you're you're stating that and it gives you the uh, the feel goods. I will simply close with this. The people that think Die Hard is a Christmas movie, just because it takes place during Christmas, if I go by that loose interpretation and ignore the whole Christianity, or Christianity, Christian point of view of God and Jesus and all that crap that's supposed to signify what Christmas is, I'll simply say this, and this is why you would be wrong about Miracle on 34th Street, uh, Pixel. In much the same vein of Die Hard is, if we call that a Christmas movie, then we the answer correctly, and this is why I'm talking about the programming you note, know, because on new year's day we will be dropping live our review of our continuing monthly review of the james bond franchises for your eyes only and the correct answer of course would be on her majesty's secret service why because it takes place some point during christmas and they're skiing in it that's what makes it the best bond film of all time and also the best christmas movie of all time damn it there you go can you argue with that huh but die hard isn't a christmas movie I agree. There you go, there guys. You go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a movie I watch every Christmas because it's better than all the other Christmas movies. Uh, I, I don't know if we... Except for Holiday Affair, though. I don't know if we covered Violet Night, but that that's a thumbs down for me. So maybe we'll cover that later on, on Disappointments of, of 2022 and talk about and have some fun as we're ringing the 2023 New Year. Guys, Ed, everybody, thanks you for showing up tonight. Um, it's always fun when you guys would participate there in chat. I want to thank the newer listeners that we've had, especially on the Dark Shadow stream and the Tulsa King one. Um, it's really nice to for people to participate as we grow. We're getting really close to being monetized here with the thousands. Just start off as a little hobby between the two of us, grew to three, and now we're at a point where it's like, hey, uh, a lot of people are responding, and we think that's really cool, too. So, again, the Extreme Movie Show is an 80s-based uh, channel. We branch off from there. We love doing action films primarily, but we'll talk other things. We like to mix in some old classic stuff like tonight. We fool around with it, too. So if you've got any suggestions or thoughts you'd like to give uh, to us so we can give you our opinion and review it, that's fine. We try not to hate on stuff too much, even if we don't like it. So spread the word around. That's the best thing you do, and it's the best Christmas present you can give us besides sharing some of your time with us. So I'd like to personally thank RDV and Professor Pixel and everybody who's been a part of the Extreme Movie Show, all the listeners and the tweeters and everything else there too for spending some of their time this year with us. It's always awesome. We look forward to 2023 being great. And, and of I, course, Ed agrees with us not being a Christmas. And I that is correct, like to, I'd personally like to thank all the porn boss and make this... Uh... <laughs> Uh, no. it's only because we're starting to climb up the metrics that we're getting noticed by that so i take that as a sign and thank you ed for staying in there i know that you're drowning in the sea of bots i so. uh i also want to say to everyone merry christmas and god bless us everyone shut your mouth have a good night everybody stay extreme dames i tell you fuck muppet